everybody! Welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen, and I'm this is Hamster Dave. Hamster Dave. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you dry brush. It's important to have the pose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just lackadaisical. That's what I'm doing. I'm just going for it. That whole setup um, was so that I could use the word lackadaisical. <laughs> but now we can move on. How's everybody doing? Hi. <laughs> Who we have? We have Chris in the chat. And it looks like Rick will be joining us. Oh, we're starting. Fantastic. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means at all. But today, we are uh, hopefully. Well, let's see how we go. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> let's see how it goes. We might. We might be finishing off our work with the game master. Maybe. Dungeons and Caverns core Possibly. set. Possibly. Possibly. Hopefully. Possibly. Fingers crossed. We're going to aim for it. Yeah, we will. So, last week, last episode, <laughs> what was it that you worked on? I sculpted this out of foam, which you can see now that it's primed, you can see a little bit more detail, and it looks more legit, yep. and not just like <laughs> not to scale. arts and crafts time. Um, and I also roughed up my floor that I made, and I made this... It's definitely a bar. It's a shabby chic slate, industrial <laughs> chic. Pin, it definitely on Pinterest. Yep. Bar. But that's where you're buying it from, Pinterest. Yep. Or Etsy. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna buy it from Etsy. It's handmade, of course. Um, but yeah. So today we're gonna be doing a lot of dry brushing. We've already started up on dry brushing. I'm texturing this to be more uniform after deciding I didn't... Well, no, I don't dislike how it's going. It's a journey, and I'm not at the end yet. Right. Maybe show people halfway through. Yeah, that works. Yep. <laughs> um, I have a couple of uh, cavern pieces here, uh, and I have a wall to go alongside the corridor floors. I've done uh, three corridor pieces for See, when you're that making actually your different looks rooms. cool up there from that angle. It does look cool from that angle, doesn't it? <laughs> it's very nice. Um, and I have a staircase to go at the end of one of the corridors. But uh, as you can see, they've all been primed. Yay! They've all been primed using the uh, Game Master Dungeon and Subterrain uh, spray that is in front of Gretchen at the moment. You can yeah. hold. Oh uh, nope, not that one. I can't read that, that. one. Oh, okay. can we focus? It's blurry. Can we focus. Yeah, so it's down closer, to you. closer to the. Closer to the thing that's in in focus. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. Way. This way. Back to where it was. No, it's all good. <laughs> now it's out of shot. <laughs> we tried. But Here, all good. Like this, like yep. down by. Here. <laughs> okay, I'll just hold still. It's not oh, oh, okay. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Oh, Leona. We tried. We tried. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Leona primed all of these uh, using the uh, using that spray, and as you can see, it has not eaten away at the foam. That's the key feature of the um, the game master spray. So yeah, all that foam is nice and sturdy there. Uh, and f as a bit of an example of what can what regular primers can do, uh, Leona hit these with some Chaos Black. This is a, just an offcut we had. You see, we've got a little bit of a warp happening there. So yeah, as I that, didn't as spray a ton. I didn't spray a no. ton on it, but you can already see that it's kind of uh, yeah. It's got a, a texture there where the um, the uh, propellant has eaten away. Yep. At the um Like it's not just not it's not just my bad um spraying. It actually <laughs> it actually does have a texture. <laughs> yes, it does. That shouldn't be there. <laughs> yep. So that's what'll happen if you uh go through with a with a kind of a, a standard coat of chaos black. You'll get that. It'll eat away at the foam and give you that uh, texture that you might not be after. If you are after that texture, you can experiment a little bit with it. And I bet you could put the um, subterranean spray over the top of this 
um, which will leave the texture and give you a good prime across the, the surface. Um, but what? There, there's another off when would you When would you want to use that? Just like in anything, you think? Pardon? Like a, when would you want to use that use, texture? Use the spray? Use that texture on a wall. Oh, um, yeah, you can use it on a... Decaying, decaying anything decay? that you want to just kind of look, that almost looks like gravel or rubble. Like concrete? Uh, concrete you could use it for, for sure. Yeah. Um, you could use it for sandstone. Yeah. Like a sandstone oh, okay. finish. Um, in, in that case, I would probably wouldn't then spray it with the dungeon subterranean one. I think they've got a um, desert sand version of that spray coming in later. But you could also uh, just hand prime it after that. Um, James that says to protect it, use Mod Podge. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, so you can do that um, to protect the the surface of the foam, give it a nice sturdiness. Um, hit it with some Mod Podge uh, or several layers of PVA glue. It'll take different amounts of time to dry, but if you've got the time. It always feels weird on this camera angle. I have my hands, I don't know what to Wish I have and shot. Oh. There we go. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. But uh, so we said hi to uh, Chris. Hi to Roger. Hey Roger. Uh, hey JT. Hey James. Hey Mike. Uh, hey Lucafio. Hey Wyatt. Hey Ashlyn. Fantastic. Ashlyn made it for the live show. Huzzah! Woo! Uh, and Welcome. I will. Um, I will just say I'm going to get this out of the way early. Leona has provided us with a celebratory candy. Oh yes. <laughs> For, for Roger finishing Monumental. Yes. <laughs> it's a definitely uh, uh, not... We are not sponsored by the, yeah, Hershey's not, at all. Well, <laughs> I'm just yeah. You have to open them upside down. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like this. I'm just joking. <laughs> yep. You can only see the back of them. Definitely not sponsored by... This is melty. I'm going to get chocolate on this. I'm sorry. The warmth warm. outside. Well, I'm going I'm to paint these with um, the cabin base, which is a, like a chocolatey brown. So okay. that's okay. I'm going to quickly... Oh, should we both be eating at the same time? Probably no, not. No, I already did it. Okay, we're wrong. You're late. <laughs> okay, you're late to the game. <laughs> okay. But when you're finished, then I'll eat. So that we're not both <laughs> chewing at the funny. same time. <laughs> Good stuff. There we go. I also, in case the audience is wondering, the audience at home, I gave myself one too. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? Nice. Mm -hmm. I have one. You guys have two because I figured the show is long. But I'll wait to eat mine. So we say three cheers to Roger. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and Kafio says, Who's that chick in the pigtails next to you, Dave? I didn't recognize her with that wedding ring she's wearing. I had my uh -huh. wedding ring on last show. I was going to say, you missed it, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Treat yourself. The coffee was exactly. busy. He was only here for a short time. <laughs> <laughs> now he's had time to, to plan for the week. Excellent. And why it says, Treat yourself. Indeed. There we go. Okay, so Leona is going through and um, adding a whole variety of uh, sort of tonal variation across Leona? Her, um, did I say Leona? You yeah. did. I'm sorry. Okay. I meant Gretchen. <laughs> Gretchen. Okay. That one. Over there. <laughs> that way. It's all good. Right across the screen. Uh, Gretchen is adding a variety of tonal variation to the uh, to flooring there. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's going to look cool. Yeah. That's, that's I have complete faith in that. I know that as soon as you I'm say, I don't know what I'm doing. That's worked every other time. It so worked far. every other time. It has indeed. So I'm going to um, move on to. You're going to know what you're doing. <laughs> the stuff that I know about. Yeah, know that, what I'm doing. Um, in the uh, Game Master set, there is a palette provided. Uh, it's a little plastic palette. Um, but when I'm doing lots of dry brushing, I like the terrain dry brushing with a big dry brush. I like to um, use a like scrap piece of cardboard instead to um, for my dry brushing because it, you got a nice big area and I like to use cardboard because it has a um, it grips at the paint it, so if you have something that's smooth that the paint will sort of slip around on it but you want that to grab the br the paint off your off your brush so that it's your brush ends up quite dry 
So that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to use this. This is the dungeon base. Ooh, get it in the shot. There we go. So that's the mid-tone gray. I'm going to use that uh, for the corridors and probably the stairs as well. Um, the primer spray, the subterranean primer spray, has a little bit of a green tinge to it. So it's not completely black or completely neutral gray. It's got a little bit of a greenish tinge to it. I kind of like that though. It has that kind of dingy dungeon vibe to it. It does, definitely. It's great. And um, as we'll see, as we're going through it, it um, works quite well for a number of, um, as a primer underneath a number of different colors. Now, you would have seen there as I did a, a big streak mm -hmm. across my uh, corridor, because I didn't take off enough paint there. Um, if you do end up with that, like a streak, like that kind of thing, um, you can, you got a number of different ways sort of out of that situation <laughs> because you don't want it to look painted. You want it to look like stone, right? So you can either do, um, take the approach that, uh, Gretchen is over there, which is, um, basically doing some stippling and you do that around the edges of the, um, the streak. So you're kind of breaking them up and blending them back into the rest of the, the area. Uh, or you can just do a little bit more of a vigorous overbrush and moving your brush around to get it catching from all different sides and it breaks up that um, that streaky area which is nice so layers is basically what I'm saying layers will help um, with any streaking you might have I think the same goes for streaking and sporting events. <laughs> Adding layers can help. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm focused. I'm focused. You're focused. Excellent. There's a lot of cool. surface area here to, to try to... To deal with? Yeah. Cool. The speed of sound. The speed of molasses. <laughs> the speed of molasses. I think we've mentioned that before on the show. What? The molasses flood yeah. in Boston. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. We won't go back through it. It's been a long time since I've read about it. But everybody should go and look up the great molasses flood. I think it was 1906. But I could be wrong. So there we go. That's the, uh, the base coat down. One of the things I'm going to do here on the, my little uh, cardboard palette as well is going to add a little bit of black. And if you find that, um, that particularly along the edges, that you might not have uh, got your primer in there or you've hit it a little bit with your fingernail or something like that, and you want to get it a little bit darker, just mix in some black to your base that you're doing there. And dig that in. And the um, the Brink Black here, as part of the kit, is designed for, oh, it's basically in there for painting along the edges of your, your foam. Usually I do a quick layer beforehand and then once I've finished all the dry brushing that I'm going to do, I'll come back and paint those, touch up those edges again. Cool. <laughs> Look up here, it's but a big day for, with the streaking jokes. Uh, Ashlyn says, I've been putting off trying terrain for a while. Kind of an anxiety over it. I can't explain. Too many different diorama ideas to hold off much longer. I kind of find it, like, kind of relaxing. Because it's not as tiny as a mini. And it's, uh... I feel like with natural elements, even though this is like stone and dungeon, the stone itself is still a natural element and the wood grain is still natural. Like, I think it gives a lot more freedom. Yeah. It's usually you're working, in most cases you're working with larger brush strokes as well. And it's, there's a, there's a freedom to that dry brush everything kind of 
approach, but yeah, it's uh, it can be daunting, particularly if you're just used to painting miniatures. Uh, but without a doubt, give it a go. Start with something small. Uh, build a little piece of scenery on a an old CD or DVD, whatever it might happen to be. Uh, they're good because they don't warp as glue dries on them. That's really cool. That's Just, a fun fact I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, they will warp if you like leave them out in the sun, apparently. But if you hide them underneath terrain, they're okay. But I would definitely, um, definitely advise you to, to jump in and give it a go. Do it with sure. something you, you're not particularly, like, super attached to. Like, don't start off for your, like, your prize mini! Like, start off for, like, something random. Yep. And... I usually suggest making a, like, a hill or a rock pile. Something like that. You can make a rock pile out of, like, actual rocks. Mm. And then dry brush them to make them look like enormous boulders. I still really want to get like that 50 cent like winter wonderland diorama kits right. <laughs> from Michaels and then just use acetone to take everything off and re have like a repaint on the show during the holiday season. <laughs> Can we fix it? Maybe. 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 There was some there were some real good ones last year that I saw that were <laughs> That would be cool if we're able to do that. Okay, and here I'm just um mixing a little bit of the black into the dungeon base uh, for the corners and the uh the edges so that I can when I come back with the dungeon highlights, I think it is. Is that the light gray? Yep. The dungeon highlights paint. I can concentrate that on the middle of the corridor. So you get that sort of... You get an atmospheric effect from a... Essential, like from a 2.5D uh, piece of terrain. But yep, looking pretty neat there. I will quickly do up these others and then we can move, move on. How has everybody's week been? What uh, miniatures have you been painting? Oh, the coffee says you can do that for the holidays. <laughs> Something tells me Gretchen will find a way to put glitter on it. I mean, it'll probably already have glitter, to be honest, if yeah. we're getting with the cheapo Michaels one. <laughs> the Michaels. The yep. trick will be how to get the glitter off at that point. I think we just need to cover it up with uh, like a regular snow flock or something like that. Yeah. But if it doesn't have glitter on there, I think the glitter will be mixed into the snow flock, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so it can match the, uh, the frost giant. That'll be good. We should plan out something for the uh, like a series of holiday. Yeah, I think that uh, would be a, a good like one challenge, one things. for one day. Yep, that would be good. Twenty-five days of miniatures, <laughs> but it's really just what like two like, episodes. Yeah, two or three episodes. <laughs> That's a lot of miniatures we'd have to paint <laughs> in those two uh, two or three episodes. Let's see, if we did three shows, six hours, four minis an hour. It's enough for a whole village. Yep. <laughs> that could be good. Oh, uh, JT is working on some Scarab Occult Terminators for the uh, Thousand Suns from 40k. Very cool. Uh, James says he's working on uh, one of the Trimorans, the small one. Excellent. Uh, Betsy says, hey, sorry I'm late. I had some work to catch up on. I uh, hope you're all doing well, Betsy. The Bowers family is uh, is doing well after Ida. Um, I'm glad you're able to join us. Glad you have internet. Yes. 
Indeed. And uh, Mike Becker says, I just uh, finished up for my rarest Blade God Lieutenant um, for my Deathwing. Posting photos shortly. Very cool. I look forward to seeing that, Mike. That would be great. Okay. There's another corridor piece. You see those um, that texture that we pushed in there with the with the rock gives that nice um, subtle effect. But yeah, looking good. And the next bit. So, how do you think you're going to tackle the uh, the wooden door? I think that I am gonna go in with maybe a very dark wash to have it fall into all those creases, and then I'm gonna go in with a light dry brush. Okay. Do you think you're gonna go for a, um... It's kind of an odd one, isn't it, for doors in dungeons? Yeah, Are yeah. Are you gonna go for... I might do, like, where the window's gone, I might do some black, like it, like it got torched out or something. Oh, okay, yeah. I think a little bit... A little bit of a smolder going on up there. Right. And do you think uh, do you think maybe doing some um, like green moldy bits if it's Ooh, like a dank yeah, dungeon it's, it is. coming up like growing up from the yeah the bottom there. I and like sitting that. Sitting in some moisture. Oh man, too bad if you don't have any like clay handy. I can put some mushrooms on there. <laughs> we can come back to those. Another day. Another day. Paint some little mushrooms down by the bottom. Those were stones are big enough for me to paint on. Yep. But I wouldn't be able to do anything particularly 3D. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to hit it with some of the uh, dungeon highlight. You can see how far the paint is going. I've just used a small, small, tiny, tiny, tiny amount of this for the basic corridors. Using some of the dungeon highlight. I like to usually like to come back and do that over the slightly darker color that I've just used, and maybe end up getting some of that mixed into the the lighter color, mm -hmm. so that it isn't too dramatic, that first first dry brush. Get a little bit of a smoother transition between the two. Of course, if you don't have a lot of time, just go straight to the high contrast. <laughs> That's looking pretty neat. I kind of remember, yeah, that's what I did. Okay. I mean, I'll grab the the floor that I did for the boss fight room that I worked on. I think it'd be nice to have those two, like have that that I worked on and the one that you're working on to see the contrast between the two, the, the different Ooh. approaches. Yeah. Be interesting. And you can see, because I've got the the corridor is nice and small, I'm able to move it around as well as my hand. So I can get the get a whole bunch of different angles on there. And you can see it's starting to be a bit lighter down that center where your characters are going to be walking. There we go. I do like this little wizard, but the emphasis <laughs> should be on, on little. He is tiny. He is very small. Oh. Put that. And oops, sorry. There we go. What else we got? Um, Oh, James said he has uh, posted a uh, work in progress this week. That's good. Oh, Betsy says we're all doing much better now. 
Fantastic. Good to hear. Uh, like I said, you can do a Halloween themed mini show in October. And just you can break out the elves and dwarves in Christmas colours. We've typically do done a, a little bit of Halloween theme. We have. Oh, well, I'm glad that Spooky things. got out there. It, it had a um, uh, oh. dried paint up at the top. Oh, and okay. I thought I got it out. Um, right. <laughs> no. No? Okay. <laughs> that happens occasionally. It's fine. It's, fine. Okay. it's good. Right here. So a little bit more of the highlight. Just into the middle. Oh, there we go. And once you've got that going on, you can bring out the dungeon effects. Mm. So you don't have to use this on the, well, you don't have to use it anyway, really, but um, you don't really have to use it on the, the flooring. It works really well on walls and corners and that sort of thing when catching the edges of things like this. There's that final edge highlight. It's very neat to use it for that, but we'll give it a go. So it's basically um, a fairly bright white. And as you can see there, Putting it over the gray will mean it's a little bit uh, more subtle when I. Oop, there we go, my dry brush it on. If you're um, not sure, sort of, if you want to do this sort of effect where you have the. it's lighter down the middle and darker on the sides. As I'm doing it here, it reminds me of some uh, floor tiles from different board games. Oh, We've got, uh, you'd have this as the, uh, the line down there. Mainly uh, like Warhammer Quest and that kind of thing. And then it's good. Uh, Ashlyn is working on some kit bashed Possessed Sisters of Battle. Converted spa female Space Marine and started Astrid Thurger. Excellent. I think Astrid Thurger, is Astrid Thurger the... Sort of like the standard bearer for the um, Sisters of Battle. I think it might be. That's a very nice mini. Looking forward to, uh, to seeing what you do with that. You see I got a little bit of streaking there again. Brush some of that off. And then just some soft brushing around there. We'll start to blend that back in. Leona was asked a question. I'm going to ask about getting a product review. Ooh. Yeah, I responded in chat. Okay, yep. Cool. Uh, and I said, yes, she is. So that's Astrid Thurga. He is the very cool standard bearer. Make sure that I get let that brushed off. There we go. Less, far less streaking. It's still catching that center line of the um, the stones. And now the final one, run down the middle. See a carving, speak friend, and enter. Are you putting a black coat? 
Um, yeah, so session. I'm I'm putting um, I'm putting black. I thinned it down with water. Um, I don't really care if it since I'm in a dry brush. I don't care if it gets the top layer of that dark as long as it's a thin layer. It's not going to mess with the texture. But I want to try to get as much as I can in all those little lines so that when I do go to dry brush, the inside lines will stay dark and the outside texture, if that makes sense, will we'll pick up those lighter wooden colors. Um, so like the raised grain? Yes, or, because okay. right now the darker bits of the grain are lighter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, which lets you see them really nicely, but um, in like the opposite way that I want you to see them. Right. It's like the colors are kind of inverted right now. So. Um, okay. I am going through, and I did the same for like the stone. It looks much darker than it'll be when I'm done. But I wanted all those creases on the inside to, um, if you can see on the edge where the white shines through. I wanted. Right them to be yep. much darker. Cool. I am going to let my dry brush dry. I'm just washing out the, um, the grays and the, the white. So now I'm going to have a go with the uh, subterrane wash. On the um, say that is what I used. Yep. To kind of texturize and tone things down a little bit. Cool. I used a little bit of it on the floor that I did a while ago, so you can see some of it in the sort of the shaded sections. Um, but you can also see in some of these areas that have um, where the floor tiles are dented down. Not tiles, I guess, but the flagstones. Um, I put some purple in there. Mm -hmm. but that's just to break that up a little bit. I don't think I'll... Uh, I might do it on... Should I do it on the corridors? Oh, you could. Okay. I'll do a little bit on the corridors then. Um, but first I'll do some uh, subterrain wash. This comes in the kit. The purple tone does not. So that's one that I brought separately from the army painted purple tone, which is very cool. So now is where I go. I, oh. oh, I had it, but I don't. Okay. So I don't have the uh, that palette. I'm going to use the lid of this box that comes in there. As do you want to use directions? Hmm. Did you want oh. to use the plastic oh. palette? I could. I thought I could. I could just use. Here we go. Hmm. Ta -da. I don't know. You could use the lid though. You could use the inside. You could use all bits of that. But there we go. There's your brushes back. So this is the um, plastic palette that it comes with. So you can see they you can do all sorts of stuff. I take the. Um, Subterrain wash. And because I want to thin it down quite a bit, I'm going to put it in one of the larger pieces. So this is just to give it a, a bit of a um, tint or a, like a glaze over the, um, the corridor section. So I'm going to use it on the this corridor section first. Um, just to, to check it out. Some water there. You see, it's still quite, quite strong there. So I still want to thin it out a little bit more. There we go. Oh, excellent. Uh, okay. Oh, Roger says, okay, out early tonight for board game night. No surprise. No surprise. <laughs> I hope you're playing Monumental, Roger. Now that you've got it all painted, uh, we'll watch it uh, when I get back. We'll see. You. Well, we won't see you then, but we'll know you're watching. Cool. Have a good one. Uh, James says that his trimaran is not from a kit. It's 100% scratch built. I don't know. James is a big fan of the boots. 
So I'm going to start putting this on there. Um, you can see how thin it is, and just getting that nice little glaze across there. Um, even though it is thin, I want to keep it keep moving around there to avoid um, any tide marks, which is kind of the, the general term for when you have um, a wash and it sort of dries along the edge. You get a I like the watercolor a, blooms. Like, pardon? Like in watercolor when you get blooms. You call them blooms? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would be, be like that. So, if you keep, uh, keep it all wet and moving around. There. And I think actually you could use, use a watercolor technique here first, which is you could paint the whole surface with water first mm -hmm. and then put it the glaze on. That'll make sure you, you keep it thinned. So there we go. You see it's, the shininess is the wet, but uh, that'll dry with just that subtle green tinge to it. Which is pretty neat. I like that. When we get to the wall, I think we'll see, um, we'll be able to paint some Get some variation going up the wall with that green shade. But uh, just quickly, I'll get these other two bits of corridor. So I'll slap some water on first. And some of the green wash. And if you wanted to, you could just sort of push it around in certain areas. Or maybe even leave it darker up towards the the sides there to continue to sort of accentuate that lighter color down the middle of the corridor. Well, there we go. So, excellent. James says, Yes, I have six Reaper Bone, five ships. <laughs> it's always good when you know what your passion is. I think. A little bit more there. How's it looking? It is going. Oh, cool. Very wet right now. But then you can catch some of the brown. Uh huh. <laughs> There's some brown. There it is. Yep. So you then think you'll go through and get, like get, once you've dry brushed the wood, do you think you'll pick out the, the stones? Yeah. Like with layering rather than dry brushing? Or do you think you'll dry brush those as well and just do it very carefully so as not to go over the wood? Uh, I haven't really figured that out yet. Okay. I'm just going with the flow. <laughs> cool. Right now, I'm just trying to get enough of my uh, brown to show up. Cool. There, there we are. In okay. all the right places. corridor. I think we'll have to take some photos with the, the whole setup once it's done. That'd be neat. Um, okay. Actually, Gretchen, can I get you to throw me one of those, um, uh, the flat dry brushes from your, yep. This one? Pipe mug there. Yep. That'd be great. Yep. Oh! I caught it. You I did. It's amazing. You never catch that stuff. So what I do here is use some gray for the um, one of these cabin rooms, kind of up here where this kind of regular section would meet the um, the corridors, mm -hmm. and then I'll um, dry brush a lot of the rest of it with the uh, cavern base, which is that, that brown. Uh, and I'll do a little bit of mixing in between, a little bit of dry brush blending. Yes, even though there's a, oh no, there we go. We'll come back to that in a minute. Get those 
Whoops. Let me get it on camera. Can I get on? There we go. Yeah, this one's a little bit bigger, so already it's a little more difficult to maneuver around. Something I haven't told you, uh, told you guys yet. No. Oh. Um, I am actually going to be uh, ducking off to Australia for a little while. That's right. Yeah. For a, uh, a, a bit of a family emergency, so I have to uh, head back. But uh, I want to tell you the fun tale of how COVID has impacted international yeah. travel. <laughs> Boy, do I know it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, um, there are very few flights heading to Australia. And when I say very few, I mean very, very few. Uh, almost none. So, finding a flight that's going there is incredibly difficult. And uh, finding one that, gets, that can get me there quickly is also incredibly difficult. So I've spent the last uh, couple of weeks looking for a uh, looking for a flight. And finally, this week, I found one. I was very excited. So, it stops in three places before it gets to Sydney. So it leaves from LA, stops in three places before it gets to Sydney. Um, oh, hey, Jason, welcome. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I will be as safe as I can. Uh, but who wants to guess what three places they are? In the Between, world? So, in the world. Okay. Uh, I, I leave from Los Angeles and I land in Sydney. But where do you go? There are three places. <laughs> where in the world is Dave San Diego? Yeah. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to very much be like that. So, are you not leaving from Baltimore? Oh, well, yes, I'll fly from Baltimore to Los Angeles. Oh, okay, okay. But okay. I don't begin my international travel Your until international I'm in. starts in LA. Yeah. Interesting. Let me find yeah, we'll give people this. some time to yeah. list their three places. <laughs> three places in the world. My guess is it's. I'm. I already kind of know, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna guess. Because that would be cheating. Because I okay. follow Dave on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't like cheaters around yep. here. <laughs> Let me just say, I am hoping to see the Aurora Borealis. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> so at oh some point, my. I'll be traveling over the North Pole. Oh my! This is the closest you'll ever be to be Santa. Yep. Just know that when you're up there. <laughs> Indeed. But it's, uh, it, yeah, it was quite, a, quite an ordeal. But I am very glad that uh, I have that booked now. I'm glad you were able to find something. Yeah. I, I, I think the other, the other thing as well is find something that was, um, like, almost uh, like almost affordable. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the... Uh, There oh, were my other flights. Oh, says, I know the real answer, so I will not say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You have some yeah, good. Like, you have some like good Japan guesses. Japan to San Diego to Sydney. Japan to San Diego yeah. to Sydney. L.A. to Hawaii. Then Hawaii, Manila. Hawaii, Fiji, and New Zealand. Why oh, says, wait, Alaska? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um... There was, a, there was a moment when I was thinking, maybe I just have to try and get to Tokyo so I can get from Tokyo to Auckland and then from Auckland to Sydney. Wow. But I found something much more impressive. <laughs> yes, Jason, um, Dave will have to quarantine, I'm pretty sure. I will, yes. Two weeks. I get to do my whole uh, Arnie impression. <laughs> Two weeks. 
right, you wanna wanna reveal? What are we reveal? Uh, where in the world is Dave San Diego? Where in the world is Dave <laughs> gonna go? <laughs> okay, okay. No, uh, so I fly from LA to Incheon, Korea, South Korea. So, uh, oh, cool. Incheon Airport, South, South Korea. South Korea! Yeah. So that's the first leg of the trip. That's with Korea Air. Okay. Uh, and then from there, I fly to Helsinki. What? People who don't know where Helsinki <laughs> is, it's in Finland. It's the capital of Finland. And then, from Helsinki, Finland, I fly to Hong Kong. <gasps> oh my goodness. You're gonna get really good airport food. I'm gonna find all the airport food. Yeah, you gotta, each place you go, since you'll only be able to be in the airport. <laughs> yeah. And then from Hong Kong, you're able from to- From Hong Kong to Sydney, yeah. Wow. So I, essentially, um, I'll be wearing a mask for, so from when I get to the airport in Baltimore, so when I leave, when I get to my hotel room, my mandatory two week quarantine hotel room in Sydney, it'll be about 72 hours of mask wearing. Wow. So, pretty crazy. You're gonna have some, do you have to get your passport stamped every time? What's that? Will you have to get your passport stamped every time? Or uh, no? I don't think if you stay you're not in out the, of the country. When it's just no, like the the sad. only place um, a lot of a lot of places actually your passport doesn't get stamped anymore, um, which is kind of unfortunate. But yeah, uh, for any so Helsinki and Hong Kong, I'll be transiting through. Gotcha. So technically, I won't leave there. But for because the second, third, and fourth parts of the trip are with Finnair. I need to leave what they call the visa-free transit zone. Oh gosh. In uh, Korea, and then uh, check back in for my my flight. So technically, I'll have to go through like customs and immigration in Korea. Okay. Collect my bag, then go back around, check in for the <laughs> Ashlyn for the says, Helsinki leg. <laughs> Ashlyn says just eat the entire time so you can take your mask <laughs> oh right yeah uh, maybe <laughs> um yes look after you indeed damn uh jason said how long are the layovers the layover in uh korea is five and a half hours i think that's enough for some good korean food yeah well hopefully as, as long as like everything's smooth sailing Getting uh, leaving the visa-free transit zone and re-entering the the visa-free transit zone. That <laughs> was one of those things where I, I got to that point and I was like, "Oh, okay." And then the little uh, advisory said, "You might need a visa. You should check out this website to find out." Oh, God. And the website said, "You should maybe check on Wikipedia. It's got lots of great information." <laughs> so I checked on Wikipedia, and fortunately. Uh, both as an Australian citizen and a US citizen, I am. I do not require a visa to okay. enter. That's what I was Korea. thinking. Because usually, there's like. I feel like usually it's only if you intend on staying that they care if you have a visa. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, Gretchen, could you lower lower it here, just a little here, bit? Here. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, a little bit more. If you ah, need, I can move the there the camera. Go. There. Nice. It's starting to look like wood. It is. Yep. At least on screen. It's looking good. How are you doing? Lots of little little streaks or. Yeah, lots of little streaks to not mess up the um, how I want it to keep doing the wood grain. I'm just following pretty much along with where I already there we go. have the wood grain that I carved. Yeah. And then kind of like dry brushing downwards. Now some of it I did a thicker bit because the foam was trying real hard to fight the paint. And I was like, that's rude. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it definitely has kind of like a dingy 
um, mildewed kind of vibe, and I like that. I wish it was as warm, as warm colored in person as it looks like on the screen. It looks a lot warmer on the screen, I feel like. Yeah. I like it better. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, get those tones. Well, keep, keep building it up so that it looks like it's on fire on the screen. Yes. And then you'll know that it's warm in person. <laughs> um, Give me good. But Excellent. yeah, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna keep building that up and then I'll go back with some green, add some mold, and then maybe add some, some scorch marks coming out over here. Like the window was blown out. Someone was... The grill was on fire. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be cool. I just realized I'm out of shot with this. There we go. Cool. Uh, Wyatt says you can't even quarantine with a family when you get there. Uh, at the moment, the Australian restrictions are that no, you can't. Um, so you have to quarantine in a hotel. Uh, however, that may have changed by the time I get there after this enormous long ordeal. Uh, but, um, so I have um, sent off an email to the appropriate authorities, um, let them know what's going on and uh, asking for an exemption to uh, complete the, the quarantine at my uh, parents' place. So fingers crossed that'll work. Cross your fingers for me, everybody. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, oh, hey, Dave. Welcome, welcome. Uh, the coffee says, reminds me of my 48 hour flight, but you're putting in more air miles. I am indeed. Well, I don't know. Where, where was your 48 hour flight from and to? I had a friend who uh, mentioned that they had uh, a four day flight when they Ooh. were redeployed from Korea back to the States. Oh, wow. So it was four, well, it wasn't, they didn't fly for four days non-stop, right, of course. Right, right. Um, but uh, they, it was basically island hopping from like Korea to... Not sure where the first one is. Guam was one of them. Maybe Guam, Philippines, Hawaii. But, uh, yeah. But no, tell us about your 48-hour hour flight, look after you. I need to... Prepare tell my us, expectations. Tell us, tell us. <laughs> Need to get those ready. So as you can see, this uh, the cabin um, base here. I'm being a little bit more scratchy with it. It's less regular, as to find. I'm also trying to get a bit more of that uh, that color on there. What I may end up doing. I think it's just um, particularly towards the center of these sections is just a little bit of uh, painting. I'll just paint it on rather than uh, dry brushing so that it'll look a little bit lighter in the in those, those squares. It's kind of a tough thing to to try and remember each time that these this, the lines that we have, the squares, are purely for like gameplay purposes. I think you can also make them tiles. Yeah, I mean, in the corridors, I'm sure, definitely have that feel, but just in the cavern-y bits, it's like, mm. So, yep, as we're bringing that in. Uh, ooh, Ashlyn says, I used to love traveling. Me too, I'm a big fan of it. There's one time when I was, uh, one year, when was it? I think it was 2000. I spent, I averaged, over the entire year, I averaged 70 minutes a day for like 365 days in, on a plane or in an airport. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. That's intense. It was like five, fun. That's intense. Yep. So it was like five, I guess five percent of my life that year was was on a plane or wow. in an airport. That's living in Sydney, and I think I flew to the UK like for work like four oh, times. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I've never taken long 
plane rides. Long like, haul flights, yeah. Yeah, like over 10 hours. I've never, all of the I've done. flights <laughs> I've taken are under eight. I've done some, and I think <laughs> I've done, I don't know how long it took to Italy. I think that was a little over eight. I think we got into the teens. Yeah. But I also slept through most of that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I am lucky that I can, most people who can sleep on planes. I really feel for people who can't. Uh, ooh, Lukafio said, uh, 48 hour flight from Middle East to Cali. All were short hops, lots of ups and downs, no direct flights. Yep. That's how this is going to be. No direct flights. <laughs> kind of crazy. Oh, so we won't see Dave again until 2022. Well, I was just uh, saying that if I'm going to be uh, in, in quarantine in a hotel <laughs> at the moment, it is about 10 a.m. in Sydney. So I'll be able to join you with uh, by the wonders of modern technology, as long as my internet connection is, uh, is solid enough. Yeah. Have your morning coffee. <laughs> yep. Hang out. And chill. It'll be great. So I can either pack some pack some paints, or try and get some delivered to the, to the hotel from the oh, local look, you uh, can actually see it. hobby store. Yeah, that's looking cool. Looking like a real door. Very nice. Is that like a Pinocchio reference? You're a, <laughs> you are a real door. <laughs> I'm a real door. <laughs> are you going best. alone? Yes, nope. Dave, is, Dave is traveling alone. Solo. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I will be traveling Dave alone. Dave Solo. The, um, the airfares are also incredibly ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and it's crazy because I'm not going to lie. I thought that prices were going to drop a little bit. Right. No, no one wants us to hang out. But, Stay and that's fine. Like, I'm not saying I, the economy needs to follow what I want, <laughs> but I was surprised that I was like, oh, I guess... I won't be traveling yep. anytime soon. And that's fine. Like, I'm just, I'm thankful that I'm healthy and stuff. I'm not going to be a complainer over here. <laughs> like, I yep. need to travel. But I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. Because I guess I was looking forward to having the option to travel again. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a, just that wonderful part of uh, economics, the, the supply and demand yeah. kind of thing. So when you're, when you're running, uh, not running many flights, or when the demand drops, the supply will drop to compensate. And then if the supply can't pick back up when the demand increases, then we're left in this current situation. Yeah. But it will be one hell of an adventure. And I... Uh, Hope that it, as much as possible goes smoothly. <laughs> yeah. When you've got all those moving parts of that many different uh, You'll have a plane good connections. story out of it. I will. I will. It's kind of crazy. You'll get to go to three different countries. Yep. And over the course of uh, two and a half days, I'll be um, in four different continents. Yeah. What? Check that out. That's really cool. <laughs> yep. That's the neat part of it. That's the part I can be excited about. <laughs> we'll see how yeah. excited it I am when I get to. <laughs> yeah, you'll be <laughs> like, get me to Australia. <laughs> yes. But you can see here why I like to use a um, cardboard, piece of cardboard or scrap. It's just because. You end up with it all over the place. So this is the um, cavern highlights. There. So I'm going to work with that. It's quite a bit lighter and it's got a little bit of a um, 
like a peachy tinge to it. That's interesting. What I probably should do is put these two together. So much stuff on the desk here. It's ridiculous. That's all. No, it's all my fault. <laughs> there we go. You can um, move it in. You yeah. can push it further onto the table. I can move it around. That's okay. Uh, would you like to look at some minis? Oh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, wait, hang on a second. One of the things I'm just going to say, this is what I'm going to do, just do a dry brush across those two pieces. So that they're... You're never going to get everything to match up perfectly. But if you do something like this, you'll get a reasonably consistent kind of dry brush at that at that meeting point. So it won't look too jarring when you put them together. But yes. Oh, hey, Gary's here. Cool. Hello, Gary. Okie dokie. Yeah, so should we look at some minis? Yeah. From the group? What have we got this week? Alexandra? Uh, Alexandra? Uh, oh, sorry. Alexandra K. It's made of an artisan guild dwarf. It's, uh, I think this uh, barmaid would be very popular in, uh, <laughs> in many dwarven taverns. I love that but, you don't get to see very um, feminine, um, traditionally feminine female dwarfs. This is true. You don't see a lot of those. Um, not not dolled up like that, anyways. No, no. I think it's uh, there's always the, there are the two two school. I guess the two schools of thought. One being that not thought, but the sort of background is that you don't see a lot of dwarven women out adventuring. I guess they typically don't go out, or they wear, they have beards as well. Which I, so I do love a good female dwarf with a beard. Oh. I do I do love that. I yep. should caveat. I but it's nice to see some some different types of some variety. Dwarf. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Definitely. But uh, I think Alexandra's done a, a great job here with the um I love the 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 hair and the um skirt mix. Uh don't mm -hmm. match. They've got that um a good uh colour combos going on there. And the, the purple shading inside the um, the skirt there is looking great too. And, and the, the skin tone is great. It brings out the musculature perfect. Yep. Definitely looking great. And the foam coming out of the tankards. Super cool. Great work. Nice one. Oh, Ashlyn is painted up. Kit bashed Age of Sigma Knight Arcanum to Adepta Sororitas Dogmata. Cool. I think the Sororitas Dogmata are. Um, I don't even know what they do in the army. They're a completely new unit that I haven't learned anything about yet. So I feel terrible. But uh, yeah, beautiful job there, Ashlyn. I think it looks great. And uh, yeah, continuing that um, great blue armor color that you've got on the rest of your Sisters of Battle. Very nice. And I like the use of that decal down there in the corner of the, the cloak. Sets everything off really nicely. Gives that great little, little pinch of a detail there. Looking good. Very nice. Oh. <laughs> did you have it did you have as much of a chuckle when you saw this as I did? <laughs> I did. I that. That's cute. This was so funny. Yep. I was like, that's amazing. Reference photo. <laughs> yep. Great reference material there. Now I, I do have to ask I are you me if uh the if her cat usually wears boxes? <laughs> Or if these were just draped over the cat for the uh, for the purposes of uh, reference photo. <laughs> but uh, yeah, plaid is always a tough one, and painting uh, all that white fur can be difficult as well. I know Yumi's done another brilliant job. I love the, the little uh, the those green eyes as well. I think they're green. Does that look like green from here? They look green. Squinting, but uh, no, beautiful job, Yumi. Great work. Kitty! Yep, indeed. But yeah, excellent work on the plaid. Brad Taylor has painted Thorn Knight from Aetherfields. 
This guy does look a bit prickly. I had to say it. Sorry. <laughs> but no, looking very cool. I love all that, the, uh, like the green growth around there, the vines. Yeah, I thought that was done really well. Yep. Well, wrapping around the, uh, the body there. And having the, uh, that armor be that sort of um, coppery bronze kind of look just really gives it, it reinforces like a, a natural um, sort of tree kind of feel. Yeah. Yeah, great color combo there, Brad. Looks great. Nice work. Oh, Brittany has painted up a phase spider. Great. Very cool. Great. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It's really done well. You despite just my despite my distinct lack of spiders, um, I <laughs> what I what I dislike about spiders, I I like in paint jobs. For that. Okay. Well, I thought you were referring to the the problems with having a phase spider, which I'm assuming phases in and out of that would this be dimension kind of thing. Awful. Yeah, so it you, pops out of the wall, you're frightened by it, it disappears, and it reappears on your head. Yeah, don't like so, that. Absolutely frightening. But uh, no, I think it looks really cool. I love that uh, the, uh, the ombre from the uh, white through the blue on the legs is very cool. And yeah. And those, uh, this, the red eyes. Red eyes on a spider always give it that uh, menacing look. Oh, so, hi, Lava Painter. It's so unnatural. Hmm? Also, Lava Painter just made it. Oh, hey, Lava Painter. And we Painter. had just talked about your... Oh, yeah. Ayumi, we just talked about your... Uh, Cassandra. Great. Excellent. So the question I had, Ayumi, was, does your cat always wear boxes? <laughs> uh, if so, do they change them every day? <laughs> oh or God. did you just drape the boxes over for this uh, for comedic effect? I'm happy with any answer. I'm just curious. <laughs> we all love it, by yeah. the way. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Great work on the plaid there. But yeah, awesome. Sorry, who did see? And what was the one we did we just switched on? There we go. The face spider, Brittany. Sorry. Okay, sorry. I was gonna say, great work, Brittany. The red eyes Excellent. are so unnatural to the spider that I think you see the red eyes and you just think of like, like you just you know it's. Be, to be contended with. Yeah. Like, if I yeah. saw a red-eyed spider that looked like that in my home, I'd be like, if I get bit like by that, I might become Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd, but, <laughs> you'd kind of walk up to it and go, no. hey, hey, spider. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, um, exactly. That. The, the red eyes are just that extra um, oomph for the, uh, the menace on the spider. But yeah. Oh. Chris Gorka has painted up Hella from uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, yeah, absolutely spectacular. The blending on that that smoke sculpt or that that yep. magic sculpt that is magic smoke. Magic smoke. Yep. It's just so smooth. It really it really makes it look like it's flowing. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, Chris has done an awesome job there, um, and I love that in the the highlight for the black of, um, of her suit, it's, it's not all the one color going sort of all the way down. There's a little bit of OSL working on there down around the legs, mm -hmm. but still you're working from that blue gray at the top down through to a, um, to a, like a greenish blue gray. I can see the difference. <laughs> it looks great. I think uh, another awesome job there, Chris. I love the, uh, as well, the OSL from the, uh, that magical smoke on the um, floor, on the floor of the, uh, the base there. The concrete, that's what I'm trying to say. Words are escaping me. Nice work, Chris. Excellent. Uh, so, bunny in boxes? Nah, she's a weird bunny, but we looked over at her for a moment and she had, a no had nuzzled her way under my significant other's laundry the box is stuck on her. It was funny not to take, too funny to, to take a picture of. So it was complete accident. That is amazing. So 
that's the fourth answer that I wasn't expecting, and it's better than the other three. Awesome one. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, David has painted up uh, some night haunts. Uh, this looks very cool. I love this model with the uh, his head has has come off at some point, but it's important that he still carries it around. Wouldn't you? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if it was necessary. Like if it was if I needed it to find my way to. Uh, you wouldn't be able to, to see. Pray. You wouldn't be able to talk. I'd be a ghost anyway. So I'm still I'm still not 100 percent sure if it'd be necessary. Have to go through all, like scour all of the metaphysical archives and determine would it be good. But no, I think it is cool. I think your paint jobs uh, excellent. I love the um, that sort of uh, pale green that you've got going on for the uh, the ghostly fleshy parts. But yeah, looking good. Nice work, Dave. Oh, Kevin Williams, a tester for maybe for Black Templars Force. I think the Black Templars might be getting a codex sometime this, this year. So, good to get ahead of the curve there. I am liking the uh, the red as the primary contrast there for the um, for all that lovely black. That gold looks very nice too. You know, on, just get on the knee pad. Great highlighting there on that, uh, that knee pad. But yeah, looking good, Gavin. I would say a thumbs up. Uh, I would also recommend that for, the, for an army, of these guys um having a uh, lighter colored base color would be good something like the um the dungeon uh or the cavern highlights that we've got here i can't remember what it might be a grill and earth shade or something no not a grill and earth shade but one of the uh there's one of the gw texture paints that would look really well as a great contrast to that but yeah looking good thumbs up Oh, here we go. This is the uh, the trimaran that James was talking about. We'll try around and build that up. Plastic and shampoo bottles. I I swear. I think we should have like a MacGyver competition, like yeah. where we see what like the coolest thing people can make from household items is for their minis. Okay. Yeah. I like that's cool. I want to see what everyone can do. Like that's okay. Super well, rad. Maybe we'll line up a, a little bit of a. Um, Maybe a diorama kind of yeah. competition. Um, yeah, there's a lot of there's some possibilities. I've actually just been watching some YouTube videos recently that uh, have people making um, dioramas out of uh, like household trash or things that would end up in the trash. Yeah. yeah. So they aren't already like recycled. Like coffee stirrers that haven't already been stirred through coffee. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that could be neat. But yeah, this is looking great, James. Nice work. Very cool. Oh, JT was working, said he was working on Scarab Occult Terminators. So super early work in progress. I've got to ask, uh, JT, are you doing, um, is that metallic blue? Or it's just got a uh, heavy gloss varnish on it at the moment? It's looking very cool. There it is. And then you've got all of the gold trim to go. So much gold trim. But yeah, looking very nice. I love the uh, missile missile rack. I don't know if you can see the guy on the guy on the bottom left there. <laughs> his missile rack goes up from his head there. Yeah. It's just incredible, incredible. But yeah, oh, blue with a blue shade. Okay. Cool. But yeah, it's looking uh, looking very neat. I like it. Excellent work, JT. Oh, Kelsey, uh, is doing a work in progress here on the Celestial Spear, Yindrasta. Looking very nice. I like that, um, I love Kelsey's work on Yindrasta herself in the, the gold armor with the, uh, sort of the blue tinged gray, um, wings. Mm -hmm. But I think my favorite thing is the, all the vegetation the, on mm -hmm. the base. Yeah, is that what you're gonna say? I was gonna say no. I was gonna say all the little wing detail, all the feather. Um, oh yeah, that is great. Yeah, all the little flecks to create that texture for the feathers. Yeah. 
It is nice. But I, I'm loving the like the saturated green, that saturated pale green, against all of that, um, the very, again, dank uh, kind of um, ruins there that she's standing on. Yep, love it. Looking great. Nice work, Kelsey. Yes, we have it. We don't have Roger anymore, so I'm glad that we ate our celebratory candy earlier. But uh, Roger Moore is Genghis Khan. So this is the final uh, final model from Roger's uh, monumental effort. Uh, but yeah, he's looking very cool here. Um, nice sheen to that uh, that black horse there. Looking good. And the um, all of that gold trim as well. Looking very neat. Looks like there's some on that saddle blanket as well. Yeah. A couple of thin lines of, uh, of gold trim there. But yeah, well, nice. He's, he's got to be fancy. Definitely. If anybody's going to be fancy, it's going to be Genghis Khan. But yeah, fantastic work, Roger. Looks great. And congratulations on completing such a monumental task. We look forward to the, another, the next project. <laughs> Roger cool. said he's here. Oh, he is. But he's on here. his phone. <laughs> Excellent. Hello. Yay. That'd be great. Um, oh. Is that looking good there? Uh, sorry, Jason said um, he must have missed the post for pics. I'll have to submit my, my Grix next week. That'd be cool. I'd like to see those. Um, just says hi diddly D and a zoom meeting. Good to see you all. Uh, I'm just talking about lots of red contrast paints that lays on that cloak. Very cool. Uh, excellent. And then it's lots of congratulations from everybody else in the chat. Last one. Last one, Wyatt and Pusa from Zombicide. Wow. That's a pretty, uh, A, it's a wild sculpt isn't it? It's an intensely wild sculpt. Reminds me of something that could be from like the Alien franchise. Yeah, it does have uh, that sort of feel, particularly after um, Alien Resurrection. Did you see that one? I did not see it yet. No? You haven't seen it? Oh, well, it's, no. it's been, you haven't seen it yet. It was probably made when you, like, it was probably released around when you were born, I would guess. No, it's probably a little bit later. I think it was like 97, 98. But, uh, I've, seen, I've seen most of them, just <laughs> not in the correct order. And so I have like chunks of memories from the, from the Alien franchise that I haven't seen as much of. So right. I might have seen parts of this, but I also probably would have been like nine or ten hiding behind my dad. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> yep. That's quite possible. It's like with my Star Wars knowledge, like... I've seen Star Wars, but the majority of the Star Wars I've seen was the same parts of the prequel films that my youngest brother was obsessed with because he'd okay. watch them on rerun. Right. So like that's what I have in my brain for the when people are like Star Wars and I'm like I nah. <laughs> enjoy the franchise, but I've seen like one scene of one film way too much. Fifty times. It was like everyone else is frozen. Yeah. Excellent. But uh, getting back to Wyatt's model, um, I love the colors you've chosen for this, Wyatt. Uh, it looks very cool. The um, the way that the uh, the blues, like the blue-green material on the uh, arms and the legs sort of blend into that purplish pink that's there. It's very, um, very kind of crazy. Part of me, like, feels like the... I think the, it's the shapes uh, have a bit of a um, like a robotic feel. Or like, like I a, feel like it looks like the inside of a like a musculature. Like, right. It looks like yeah. 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 But no, so, uh, what we got? Um, Delightfully creepy. Yep. Uh, uh, Jason says very species like. Just says this figure could be used in Gene Steel Occult Army as some sort of matriarch. It could. And uh, just is definitely Geiger inspired. That's H.R. Geiger. Geiger. From uh, who designed all of the aliens stuff. But uh, yeah, looks um, looks great, Wyatt. I love your choices there. 
Nice work. It's excellent. That's the last one. Well, should we tell folks what they need to do? They need to send in some minis. Send in your minis. So, uh, yeah, uh, each week, uh, usually, uh, Leona will put up a post on the Penny Happy Little Minis Facebook group that uh, basically says, pop photos of your minis, uh, either finished or work in progress into the comments. And I uh, shall gather those up and we'll look at them next week and offer our thoughts, our critiques, our, um, or just sort of drool over them. <laughs> Get excited by the cool miniature fair that you're providing for us. It'll be very cool. Very nice. So how's it coming along? Oh! Yeah, it's coming along very nicely. So if I pop this little way, bits of, um, this way. There we go. Excellent. Little bits that. of uh, lichen there. Yeah. Did you use some of the, um, what was it, uh, grotto slime? Yes. Is that what it's called? So I got the grotto slime going on there. You can see when I turn it, that's on the, on the moldy floor. Because if it's wet enough for mold growth, I feel like that goes like downwards, and that's where all the puddles would be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very definitely. And then, uh, yeah. So that's how that's looking. Delightfully gross. Yes, I'm just gonna go with gross. I'm gonna go with delightfully <laughs> gross. But. I really, really wish I had some like Play-Doh or something for mushrooms. <laughs> and I just boop them on there. Um, I think it would look really good with some like little little white mushrooms like growing out from the side here. Okay. Like I feel like that would enhance it. Maybe what sort of shape? Like little uh, button mushrooms. Yeah, yeah like okay. little little ones that. Um, either the ones that like swoop out or the ones that are like look like s stairs where it's just like the top of them oh like the, the little disc yeah yeah okay. like one of those like a little saucer kind of thing yeah what are they called I don't know what those mushrooms are called somebody will I, let us I know. feel like there's multiple ones and I feel like one of them is probably delicious and the rest will all kill you um <laughs> cool. but Excellent. yeah Ooh. Oh, Dave, Dave Hummel, uh, you said I did. You didn't have an episode that week. Not upset, by the way. I'm, I'm confused. I think he's saying he did post a picture. Oh, he po he posted something. I get it. Sorry. You have to repost. Yes. You have to repost each week. Yep. Sorry about that. Um, yes. Sometimes things beyond our control. We'll um, sorry, impact bro. our schedule, but uh, we'll always try, try, try to get it into the show. Cool. I get it now. <laughs> now that Larry's explained it to me. Care about your doppelganger from the cha Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Apparently I look like an actress from the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know her name. I don't know. I've not, I don't think I've ever actually seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I'm going to have to take Luca Fio's word for it. Um, I also get told that I look like Amy Adams a lot. Okay. Especially when my hair was red. Oh, yeah. I, I see that. was like, yes. I see the red hair and yes, um, I did think Or like that. when she was in Enchanted. Yes. Um, yes, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like... Not exactly, but just like, you I did look more like her. Similar, yeah. And then I've also been told, especially again when my hair was red, that I looked like Pam from The Office, and I don't watch what? The Office. Okay, I don't see that. So one. I was like, okay, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know what this is. Um, Pam's a very nice character. I look like a bunch of people I don't know. Yeah. Um, I I look like me. But no, Pam is a nice character. She has a good sense of humor. Kind of dark, but <laughs> there are far yeah. worse characters from the office to be like to. to. <laughs> yep. But yeah, most most of what I've ever gotten was Amy Adams. I have in the past been uh, 
compared to uh, Bob Crane, who played uh, Colonel Hogan in Hogan's Heroes. I don't know what that is. Nope, it was probably out of reruns by the time you were born. I know Hogan's Heroes. That's so, oh my gosh, you're right. It's so true. <laughs> it's not really. It but is. That's the closest I get. <laughs> yep. There was a period of time where we watched, my family and I, we like watched all of Hogan's Heroes. Yeah. And so then we would always say, I see nothing. I see nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> yep. Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. Uh, the thing is, is you don't look exactly like him. I don't, no. But he has some good hair moments, and y <laughs> you also have good hair moments, so I think that's maybe what... Your hair just vibes. Your, yeah, yeah. Like, I think... Yeah. It's, it's, it's that. It's I definitely. think it's the hair. It's that and the dimples, I think. Oh, yeah. That's fair. But... Other than that. Like, actually, I'm looking at this older picture of Bob Crane. Here, maybe I can save it. Yeah. So that then, so that I can bring it up. Because I feel like I'm not that crazy. Like, this kind of does look like Dave in the future. Let's see. It's going to be interesting. Here we go. <laughs> Like, look at that hair. I feel like that hair. Yeah, yeah. No, your hair the definitely. Hair the hair more than looks, the face. Yeah, exactly. It's not. So I feel face, like you could rock that outfit. Well, the other thing as well is, uh, see how his, his eyebrows? Yeah. Are they like kind of do the? They kind of do what yours do. Yeah. yeah. And then they kind of fade you, out. You you could dress it as him for Halloween. Yeah. No. But it's to me this picture. It's the hair, I, not yeah. really the face. It's just there. Hang on. Can I get the angle right? <laughs> just pull a grab of Amy Adams from Enchanted <laughs> in that picture and mush them together and be oh like, and our host. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. I think that would be funny. That would be great. Instead of Gretchen Settle and Dave. Um, yep. I have to put my hair back to red. I just, I just put Amy Adams and Bob Crane, Bob Crane. at the beginning. <laughs> yep. You should definitely do that. And then in in the intro, rather than having scenes from Painting Happy Little Minis. It's just from the movie. They're from like Enchanted and from Hogan's Heroes. That's your April, <laughs> that's your April Fools right there. Oh my gosh. You did not yep. hear it from us. Yep. I Please really be surprised later. <laughs> surprised next year. Oh, there we go. Nice. That cavern looking pretty good. Oh, your cavern's muddy. It is. Yep. It's quite muddy. So yeah, like that. Uh, and then I'm going to go with a little bit of that um, subterranean wash. Again, pull that back out. Get some more of that going. Um, so you got to keep it a, a little clean at Garistro's Bistro, only the mold. <laughs> Josh Potter says those mushrooms might be used on Garistro's realm, uh, realm famous baked submarine sandwiches, even though no one knows what a submarine is. The gnomes might be working on one. Uh, oh, JT's off, hopping off for the night. Go Bucks. I guess you're going to watch some football. <laughs> Amy Adams had blonde hair when she portrayed. So fun, fun fact about Amy Adams in portraying Amelia Earhart. For that was the first time I was introduced to Amy Adams, and at the time I had blonde short hair exactly like hers. <laughs> oh my gosh. And my um, and her portrayal of of um, Amelia Earhart is kind of similar to my personality in high school. Uh, maybe similar mm -hmm. to my personality now. I don't. They're like <laughs> adventure, yay! Um, and my friends I went to see it with flipped. They kept calling me Amelia for like the rest of the school year. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, Excellent. That's cool. Uh, oh, James, uh, James says I know that one. I think you might have been referring to Hogan's Heroes there. 
Uh, the copier says, uh, Love Hogan's Heroes. We're showing our age, Dave. Yes, we are. Shorts! <laughs> George says, Hooray for Nick at night. Um, he says, We need to get Dave a monocle. But, uh, yes, yeah, so it's, kind of, it's kind of funny. When I moved to the US, I kind of discovered how much, um, like, how many programs that we that I got to see growing up that would be like on repeat all the time um, were actual, essentially actually failed programs <laughs> over here. Oh, I was like, right. yeah, we would just watch that all the time. I'm sure there must be like four or five seasons. And they're like, nope, there was one. We got to see one season Isn't that the and then worst? it disappeared and then they sold it off to Australia. <laughs> when there's like, you, you want more and there's, there's not. Yeah. Well, with that one, it was like, it felt like there was more. It's just, it, it wasn't until later in life that I learned that they were, it just really wasn't. <laughs> yeah. um, Hogan's Heroes reminds me of MASH because, like, historic yep. war move stuff. They're different, but... And MASH does actually have a lot of seasons, but going over a friend's house, her dad would always have it on, but it would always be like the same episodes. Oh, the same episodes of MASH? Or? Like, I know that series has You're like, like me with that one. some seasons, but I've only seen yep. like the same episodes. That was, uh, that was on for more years than the Korean War. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. But uh, yeah. Uh, Lukafia has to jump off. Good night. Good vibes to you and your fam, Dave. Thank you very much, Lukafia. Uh, James says he used to watch it after school every day. I'm hoping that's... Uh, I think that's Hogan Sheriff. I probably... Yeah, I probably did the same. Or MASH. MASH would usually be that... Um, you'd be on around like 7, 7.30. Come on, but didn't it come on similar to the time of like Happy Days? Fun. Like Happy Days. That's yep. that's what it was called, right? That's yeah. That's another, that's another movie from the uh, another sorry, sorry TV show from the uh, the before times. From BG. <laughs> did you watch Happy Days? I did. There we go. I did a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen I've seen Happy Days. Uh, I think the the one like older TV show that I think of a lot of the times though is my mom used to watch um, Lois and Clark. Not yeah, Lois and Clark. Lewis. Lewis. No, not Lewis. Jesus. What is it? Um, oh, Lois and Clark. Oh, the the Superman. The, the Superman one. Yeah. Sorry, that was after my time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was AD after day. Uh, after day. <laughs> But no, because it was, um, oh, I don't know when that came about, if it was early, early 90s or late 80s. But she used to watch that, and then she used to watch... Um, that's funny that they called it Lois and Clark. <laughs> it was, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. Yeah, it called. was 1993. No, it was. It was um, just like, Lois and Clark? I mean, yeah. come on, yeah. guys. And then... Um, it's like you're not even trying. I know. <laughs> Walker, Texas Ranger. Right. She would she would watch that all the time, <laughs> and so I would I would watch that with her as well. Some good old Walker Texas. Ninety three again. Ninety three. Yeah. Texas Ranger. Nine seasons. They're doing so. a reboot with that guy from um, Supernatural. There we go. Oh yeah, they are. Look at that. Yeah. I only know his Supernatural name. Now we got, Which I think is his real name. That's a table that you want to eat a pastry off of. It <laughs> is. It is. <laughs> Lewis and Clark, that'd be a great series. Historical adventure at its finest. Yep. Honestly, that would be actually a good series. There uh, is a series that came out called Frontier, I think, with uh, Jason Momo. Mas oh, yeah. Yep. Um... Set in uh, Canada. Yeah, and mm. it's actually a really good series. Well, I personally thought it was a really good series. Yeah. And I feel like they could totally do a Lewis and Clark 
like version of that. I think so. I pers I was like a little disappointed that they didn't do anything else with that series. Yeah. What was it? There were th like three seasons. Were there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did I just totally miss that? Possibly. No, it's a good one. I'm gonna have to watch that because I definitely only saw the first series. Oh yeah, you're right. There were three seasons. They were just a tr everything was short, like eight or ten episodes, something like that. I always go back and blame the um, 2004 writers' strike <laughs> for the the change and for that fairly monumental change. Because there are a lot of shows then that just went from they went from being 22, 24 episodes a season to to ten. Yeah, so there's only six episodes in each season. Oh, really? So only six? Wow. I must have watched them, but not realized. <laughs> just thought it was all one. I just, thought it was just, all one. Just binged yeah. it from start to finish. <laughs> yep, that's probably it. Thinking, oh, there were 20, 3, 6, 18. Yeah, thinking 18 episodes was one season. <laughs> yep. There was a... Um, <laughs> rut row. Do you need me to grab that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there was another um, historical drama um, sort of set in colonial Canada as well called um, Box Skins, which was very cool. And it had um, Jeffrey Rush in it. I think it was Jeffrey Rush. No, it wasn't Jeffrey Rush. My bad. It was the guy who played, um, oh. who was the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher Snake. in, no, no, in um, the Prisoner of Azkaban. So third film. Oh. One of uh, James ask, Potter's friends. You're asking me questions. Who was the werewolf? Zan McLaurin? Lupin. Zan Sam McLaurin? Is that his name? Is that the actor's David name? David Thewillis? I'm just naming some of the actors. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I don't know the actor's name. Oh, okay. But it was the guy who played Lupin. Oh, yeah. David Thewillis. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. If you get a chance, anybody gets a chance to see Box Skins? Yeah. Very cool. That's his name. David Wheeler. Okay. Slash David... David Wheeler, professionally known as David Thewillis. Okay. That's the guy you're talking about. Yep. I'm double checking. I've seen it. He looks a lot like Jeffrey Rush. Does in uh, like Jeffrey Rush does in the Pirates movies. It's true, actually. Okay. So there oh, we go. Oh, it's like a Nat Geo show. Yeah. Interesting. How's that looking? Very you good. Liking that? The little puddles of uh, acid. Uh, kind of acid. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just yucky goop. You don't want to step in. And I hit the uh, so this area up here. I hit that with um, a bit of a green glaze, like I did with the um, corridors. So let's see how they matches up pretty well. Ooh. Very nice. See, I yep. feel like instead of goop, I should have some, some lava or something kind of similar to uh, Garistro's theme. Right. I think I'm going to go and paint some edges, just paint some edges quickly, and see how we go. Um, uh... Okay, Jason says, uh, OG happy days with Pat Morita. Or the ones with Mork. Yep. I don't know. They were great. Well, Pat Morita I... <laughs> went on to be uh, Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yep. It's neat. And, of course, Mork, Robin Williams. Uh, Remus Lupin. There we go. That was his full name. Thank you very much, Mike. 
Yeah. So many good TV shows. Why would you so need to go anywhere? Done. Like you wouldn't have to. Wouldn't, don't have to travel. You just watch all of those travel wonderful to your couch. scenic things going on. Yeah, travel to your couch for sure. I keep moving this around, and then I'm like, "Where's the paint water? It's right here, <laughs> underneath these things." So yeah, I'm just going to thin this a little bit, thin the black, make it a little bit easier to apply around the edges. But uh, once I put this on, it'll really tidy that all up and look great. But yeah, this has been a nice sort of fun break from just painting minis. Yeah, right. I'll have to definitely bring Garistro next time to place him in his bistro. Yep. Very cool. Don't let me forget that. Enough of you follow me on Twitter. Right. <laughs> it's like next Wednesday, be like, did you remember the bistro? The bistro. On Twitter? I can't do it on yeah. Twitter. Don't use the Twitters. You don't. You don't use the Twitters. No. That's okay. We love you anyway. For sure. I'll have to look into Bergson's uh, French Canadian. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. the group that became. So you're like we're like distantly related. Yeah. Yeah, the group that became the Cajuns. Yep. Way back when. Okay. Uh, oh, Jason says, uh, "What would you?" Uh, what would you suggest uh, for sealing the terrain after painting? Uh, oh no, would you suggest sealing the terrain after painting? And if so, what is safe? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably a good idea to do that. Um, I would seal it with some uh, PVA glue or some uh, some white glue, wood glue. You can do. Um, uh, James suggested Mod Podge earlier. Uh, anything that's going to give you a, like a solid surface. Um, so you could do something like the um, XPS Foam Sculpting Glue. You could thin this down um, and paint it over the top if you wanted to. Uh, as long as you don't have any exposed foam, you could probably um, hit it with a spray varnish as well. Um, oh, Mike says a seal with Liquitex Matte Varnish. That's probably a good idea too. Um, you might be able to uh, shoot that through an airbrush, if you have an airbrush. Uh, but anything that's going to give you a, like a nice uh, translucent, uh, well, transparent um, solid coat is going to work. But yeah, I was going to say you could use it like a regular spray varnish if you have a, um, what do you call it? Uh, as long as you've got all of your foam covered. If you hit it with a, generally a, um, gloss varnishes have a um, better protection value. You're gonna get, um, oh, there it is. Uh, better protection from a gloss, uh, but then you can come back and hit it with a um, matte varnish afterwards. So you get that double, double bonus. So lots of different things you can try. Um, experiment, find out what works for you. They're all going to have different drying times as well, so depending on how quickly you need to use your terrain or how much time you can leave it somewhere to dry, even on a flat surface without any cats in the room. Yeah, my cat got into mischief this morning. Yeah? I was told, yeah. Apparently, my husband left a pack of ground beef on the table when he got home from getting dog food this morning, because we were out of dog right. food, and then he fed the pets, and then he forgot that he left the groceries on the table. Ah. And then he went downstairs to hop on the computer real quick and heard a thud. And then he remembered he left the groceries <laughs> on the table. <laughs> um, but uh, he heard the dog boof at the cat, and it turns out that through the power of teamwork, yeah. uh, they had knocked down the, uh, well, the cat, because the dog doesn't jump. Yep. Um, he's... A little old and arthritic, but the cat had knocked down the ground beef to the dog, who had probably been the one to rip it open, and they were feasting. Right. Um, though they had some some distinct opinions on on sharing, I'm right. told. <laughs> no. 
Um, yes, that was one of the opinions. <laughs> Could be got any Roy's or uh, Thibodeau's? No, my family comes from the Broussard side. So. The which? The Broussards. Uh, so Cajun, the Cajun people were all originated from like the same 800 women folk who were shipped from France. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, they... In box skins, that's a feature of the story. Oh, because they ran out of women. The Acadians ran out of ladies. And they wrote back home and they're like, um, we need lady folk. And so France was like, hey, if you agree to go marry one of the guys over there, one, you'll get to choose which one's your husband. So that was nice, right? Yep. Good perk. Two, we'll pay your dowry. Huh? Which is really nice perk if you come from a poor family. And three, they didn't really care about your pedigree. Right. Um, they cared that you were a young woman of marriageable age. So about 800 women went over, and you can look up like all the original names, and Broussard no is like a poor translation right. of one of the names. Okay. <laughs> um, and so a lot of Cajun people, if they like go back far enough in their history... They're like, oh, yeah, like five, ten generations back, we were cousins once. Right. Um, of course, like, since then, like, a ton of other settlers came and married and whatnot, but... Right. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. That is interesting to know. But yeah, it is a, it is a feature of the... Um, yeah, they've sure. done it a few places where they were like, huh, we did not think about populating the area. <laughs> yep. Hmm. And then um, I think in Jamestown, was it? Or one of the, like, East Coast, like, original settlements or something. Okay. Um, it was part of their plan to get people to want to stay because they figured having women there would make men more invested because then they'd have families. Right. Yeah, I forget what original... It might have even been New Amsterdam, the New York... What, what eventually turned into New York. Yep. I think... I could be wrong, but... I don't know. My... I, I think my favorite I, thing is that it, is knowing that New, that New York used to be called New Amsterdam because of the They Might Be Giants song. Istanbul, not Constantinople. Good, Istanbul, good not fun Constantinople. facts. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, and my Cajun history lesson's, like, probably missing I chunks and bits and pieces right. and whatnot, but... Well, it's, it's cool to know that. I did, I did not know that before. Yeah. Now I do. Excellent. Um, it was also owned by the Spanish before it was owned by the French. Oh. Yeah. oh. Dave Hummel says, Night all after medieval times, the wife. Have Ooh, fun. that sounds really fun. Uh, Jason says, uh, "Mod Pro spray or the brush on?" Question mark there. So I think James might need to answer that one. Um, I usually Mod Podge before painting, but wonder if I should swap when I do it. Uh, I think probably doing it before painting is still going to be the best, and then after that, you could probably just hit it with a with a spray varnish. Get matte spray varnish. It should be fine if you've got that Mod Podge seal, uh, Mod Podge sort of layer protecting all of uh, the foam. Um, Rontnort said, We had a toy poodle jump on the kitchen counter to push a steak down some years ago, and our dog pack feasted. Yeah. We had to call out for pizza. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> happened multiple times. My husband does not always remember when he leaves things out, and he is much, much better about it now that he's <laughs> lived with animals for a prolonged period of time. Right. But there has been a, a stolen steak or two from um, when we first moved in, and he didn't realize he couldn't put things at a snoot out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, no snoot height things. Because the, the dog actually is really well behaved if he's in the same room with you and you're like eating. He doesn't beg or anything like that. Right. And he won't steal anything from a table or a counter. But if you leave it on, say, a TV tray or a coffee table and then you leave the room. Right. 
then you're not there to tell him no. So technically, he is not breaking the rules, and it's not um, on the table where people eat. Sure. <laughs> My, my, my dog is very much a rules lawyer when right. it comes to, to his training. <laughs> He's Excellent. He is all about that. That's funny. Nice. If my dog was a human child, he would ask why a lot. Cool. Well, there we go. Uh, James says brush on. Josh also says brush on Mudge Podge. Flat finish. He seconds James' suggestion. So now that we have a, uh, a nomination and a second, I think we should vote on it. Here, we should have a look. Um, oh, there's an interesting idea right there as well. Uh, if you do it the same way as Black Magic Craft, who is a, uh, a terrain builder on YouTube. Uh, you could add black to the Mod Podge and add it first as a primer. Oh, that's cool. Could be neat. Could be neat. Uh, Betsy says, my dog is the same way. He waits until your back is turned and then all the rules go out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no, the cat doesn't that. care about rules. Yeah. The cat does not have rules. The cat has guidelines. The cat is also giant. And nose. <laughs> uh, he's actually probably nearing around 18 pounds now. Okay. So he's he's getting pretty big. He's like the size of a small lynx. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and he caught a mouse, so he's very confident now. Okay. That is cool. I think it's amazing how much just painting the edges black. Yeah. Really uh, cleans everything up. I think it's awesome. Very nice. How's it going? Ooh. Looking good. Yeah, it definitely has that dank, dirty kind of. Oh. That is a lot grottier than uh, I would hope for. Uh, kind of want it to look like there's like puddles and places where it's been almost like polished from people scraping and walking and moving and okay yep worn nice and worn that's good cool excellent so. oh Jason says yeah I've been following uh, Black Magic Craft but it's good to see what others do sure Speaking of cool terrain videos, I saw um, an excellent video um, from, I think it's Real Terrain Hobbies. That's what it is. Uh, he's done a, um, a build of the Shire. That's so cool. Yep. It's done like a um, six by four foot table in three sections and built all of these, uh, basically built up a hillside and a very cool um, set of hobbit holes. So if they, uh, they should check that out if you're into terrain building or hobbits. Or terrain building and hobbits. Terrain building and hobbits. Any mix of the above. I'm redoing so. my whole basement to be Lord of the Rings themed. Yeah? Yep. Nice. It's gonna look pretty. Well, hang on, no, when you say Lord of the Rings themed, is it like, the lair of the Balrog? Or is it like Bilbo's pantry? So we're kind of doing Bilbo's a, pantry I'm down for a bit. We're kind of doing a mix between like the Shire and Mirkwood. So kind of okay. kind of rusticy, homey kind with, of with enormous spiders. Well, well technically yes. My okay. basement does have large <laughs> spiders. Um but uh yeah, so but more of the, um, like the dreamlike state. Yeah. Where if you wander too far away from the door, you don't know where you are. That kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's fine. Cool. Hot <laughs> pools with spiders. I mean, technically, yes. That's not wrong. I've, yeah. I've seen a spider so large as type of wolf spider, and I thought it was a mouse. Okay. Yeah. I saw a scurry. 
it was out of the corner of my eye, it was a large scurry, and I was like, oh, there's a mouse, and I'm not scared of mice, so I'm like, doo doo doo, but I also am very not good at seeing in the dark. Right. Um, and then I get closer, and then I see that it is, in fact, a mouse-sized spider, and then I flee. Right. <laughs> yep, I would, uh... Yeah, I would um, not be happy with that. I was like, nope, 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 nope. I noped right on back to the couch, and I yelled until my husband <laughs> took off his earphones from gaming. I was like, what's going on? And I was like, there is a large, there's too large of a spider in this basement. And he was like, no, it can't be. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, was just sitting, <laughs> was just sitting there having a little snack, saying, hey. It Just like chilling. scurried out, and then whenever I was like, oh golly, it's a spider, you know, it ran under a pillow. All right. And I was like, no. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of terrifying. Can't, won't. My, I'm scared of spiders, um, and they desperately, like, they come towards me when I try to shoo them away. Yep. I don't know what it is. Did we ever see the Battle of Five Armies game that Duke Seafried had hundreds of figures and the Lonely Mountain was all of eight or ten feet high? I have I have seen photos of that, Josh. Wow. Um, That's insane. That's yep. so much. Yeah, Duke uh, Duke Seafried was um, a guy. Oh, he's a guy who um, has put on loads of... like He's a, one of the U.S. I'm not going to say founders of wargaming, but basically really helped wargaming become a big thing in the U.S. Um, in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, but his shtick was essentially creating enormous games. So the games would be, like, minimum kind of 12 feet by 6 feet gaming tables. And there'd just be enormous amounts of troops on them, all based around a particular... Um, historical event or scene from a fantasy novel or um, that kind of thing. I saw um, him actually game master a game of um, like a pirate game uh -huh. and so there were like small tables in this particular area and on the tables were islands and everybody who was playing had a ship but their ship was on a, at the top of a pole at the same height as the tables that's so cool. And on casters, so you rolled the ship around and you walked with it. That's so you really could, neat. Yeah, you could sail through, and it, with everybody doing it, like if you just had one person doing it, it looked a little bit odd, but with like 12 people doing it, it huh. was just like, this is really damn cool. <laughs> That's really cool. It was definitely excellent. Yep. That is rad. Yep. Very, uh, very cool stuff. But, uh, that's yeah, it's definitely uh, famous in particularly the historical wargaming circuit for um, for those games. I got to take a f take photos of a whole bunch of them at uh, Historicon once. That was uh, definitely a lot of fun. Now I. I was asking about. We need to tell their patrons to stop spilling their drinks. The cleaning. I was like, "Who are my patrons?" <laughs> <laughs> Who's the cleaning stuff? I don't think there is cleaning stuff. That, what do you think the mold's for? Oh, yeah, it's gonna get eat all of the uh, any uh, spilled uh, beverages. It's good. It's living its best life. I really do wish I had tiny little mushrooms I could just stick all over this, though. Yep. Has anyone come up with that for, like, a terrain piece kit? Like, little yep. mushrooms? Yep, they are around. I want them. <laughs> Some of them I know. I think uh, Cromlech does them. Um, there are probably a few others. Uh, there would no doubt be some 3D printed uh, things that you could put on there. But as you say, you could do it with putty as well. I do have putty at home. I have putty and I have clay at home. Cool. Well, I'd... I'm gonna show up with a ton of mushrooms and curry straw next time. Curry <laughs> straw. That's yes. what you bring in next time. Oh yes. Clean, clean this off. 
aside because I just realized it is 8.59. Yeah. Yeah. 8.59. I was just about to start on the staircase, but it's like, eh, maybe not now. <laughs> okay. That's why I'm winding, winding it down. That's why next time is mushrooms. I like how it looks like two different parts of the dungeon. Yep. Like your a different guy definitely rules the roost for your your dungeon bit. Yeah. Yep. This guy. Raw. This guy. So I could put miniature for scale. There we go. Hey. And you can see how small this. Uh, I think it's like a a dwarf wizard. I like them. Next time. You can okay. use small push pins for mushrooms. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. You do that. That'd be mm. good. Actually, yeah, if you had lots of little, um, you know the dressmaker pins that have, they're, they're like beads at the yeah. end? And if you had like lots of those, trim them down and then stick them in. I do like have a there. bunch of those, but I need wire cutters. I can bring those. Yeah. If you bring them, I'll, I'll make them. Okay. You better make a note. Why don't we have to paint them? I'd have to paint them, though. We well, can paint them on the show. Yeah. We have whites. That's right here. We have tans. But yes, I think um, we've had a pretty successful I think run we through, have. creating I'm, some fun stuff. I am quite pleased with how this door has come out. It came out better than it looked like it was going to when I first started carving. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I think it looks very cool. My yeah. My track record of not knowing what I'm doing and having it turn out okay anyway is Again. Win. still still happening. Yeah. Just add yellow dots and you're good to go. I I mean I do have push pins, so you can try we're it. gonna have to try that. I I, so. I like the idea of using what's available in my home to, to make things. Right. Because yep. sometimes you don't want to go out and buy stuff. And that's fair. Totally do. <laughs> But if you do want to go out and buy stuff, I'm going to suggest the Game Master Dungeons and Caverns core set. <laughs> this, this is available now at your friendly local game store, or if they don't have it, they can get it from Alliance Game Distributors. Mm -hmm. It is $100. That's a pretty good price for all of this. For all the stuff you get in it. Yep. For the uh, so seven 18 mil paints, two 50 mil paints, the How to Build Dungeons and Caverns guide included, or you could just watch our two episodes. Uh, one large dry brush, one medium dry brush, one uh, wash brush, one 300 mil can of dungeon and subterrain terrain primer, uh, which is just in front of Gretchen over there. Yep. Oh. Yep, that one. Next to your, no, the one on your right hand. There we go. Uh -huh. The one I, oh, you can see it this time. Woohoo! <laughs> Delightful. The hot wire foam cutter. Uh, the uh, XPS foam sculpting glue, the scenery sand, I don't think we showed that. So it's scenery sand. Thank you for it's that moment. It's also a musical instrument. It is a musical it's instrument a as well. Holy. <laughs> so you definitely, um, the cool thing is you can put that onto the boards, like with the glue beforehand, mm -hmm. before you prime it. And oh, then prime and over texture. it. And when you dry brush like this, it's something I should have done, but I wasn't thinking. Uh, you also get I don't think on this show. some cool tufts. Super cool. Super cool. Cool tufts, which are good for the cabin section. Uh, and you also get, uh, as well as the mixing palette, the sandpaper, the scenery knife, the ruler, uh, eight pieces of foam. Eight pieces of foam. You can make a lot with it. We've only used, we've only scratched the surface with this. Well, and even still, like, I, oh, there goes a mini. I caught it. Um, <laughs> Good job. If I wanted to turn this over and prime and paint the back end of this and just have a, like, reversible board. Oh, you could totally do that. Really easy. Yep. Like, could, if I don't break everything. If you turn that over, you could um, could do like wood grain on the back. Oh, the yeah. whole thing in wood grain, and be like wood grain. You have like a tavern floor. I could. On one on one back, it could be tavern floor. On the other, and I feel like it'd be super easy to just be like, okay, like scene change. Yep. Turn it around, whatever's on. <laughs> scene change. Ta-da. 
but yes, you also get um, a, bo a bag of um, cool accessory pieces. Uh, I think these are from some of the Mantic uh, kits. So there are lots of um, trap doors and actual traps. So there, and there's also a great, um, if you're a big fan of uh, Harrison Ford, you can do. So loads That's of cool stuff so you've got there. Cool. Uh, Josh says, doesn't sound like a lot of foam, but be sure to save your cutoffs. You'll find that you have more than you think. Yep. Exactly. Which I think is very accurate. Indeed. Uh, they do have a uh, pack of like extra foam, which has, I believe, uh, seven or eight pieces in it of this size. So a nice stack. And that's like $20, which is a great deal for, um, for the 10 mil um, XPS foam. Oh, that's where I attacked it with a rock. That's what happened there. So yeah, um, very cool. How excited Go out are we? And get some and make some terrain so we can see what everyone else creates. Cause I want to see it. It also does such a good job. <laughs> that's I mean that's really where that little bit right there. It yep. makes life so easy. It does. And it's honestly really fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. That's what I'm doing now. It cuts through the foam so much smoother <laughs> than you think it does. You kind of feel should, like you're yep. wielding a laser. You're like, I do. no resistance. Yeah, it's great. That's how I imagine a lightsaber cuts through something. Like that's what that feeling. I'm pretty sure it's exactly how it cuts through. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. But yes, so. All right, well. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next Thursday where we continue to watch paint dry. <laughs> it's like that's the new name of the show. Right? It's not painting happy little minis anymore. Painting happy little minis where watch. we watch paint, paint dry. dry. Nice. And? <laughs>